We've gotten to the point now where you should be writing reasonably complex programs. Uh, things that have more lines than fit on a single page and that require a fair bit of thinking as to how you're going to structure them. Once you've hit this point, you have to start working on how to test your programs. Just because you wrote it and it compiles doesn't mean that it works. There are certain things that we should aim for in testing our programs and some of the simple things are you have to have inputs that you know your answers to and you have to run it a number of times to make sure it does what it's supposed to. But we can be more specific about that. How exactly should we go about doing our uh, testing? How many times should we run the program? What type of inputs should we use? One of the things that's generally done is testing extremes for inputs. So if we look at the program that we wrote previously to illustrate do while loops, I've added in here an extra bit of logic that tests that deals with one of those particular extremes. If we had we did leave this out initially, and if we had run the program and somehow tried to calculate an average before we had any tests or any assignments, we would have gotten division by zero errors. Okay, we wouldn't know that unless we had tested it. So testing extremes, testing cases where certain things are empty or possibly where they have a fair number of items, those are things that we want to test. Another significant aspect of testing though is what's called test coverage. And so there are a number of ways that we can describe the coverage that we have in our code. One is that if we have functions in our code, which we should, we want to make sure that we have a test, at least one test, that runs every function. So whatever it is, wherever we've put it in there, it should be called at least once. In this particular piece of code, the print menu function is always called at least once. We couldn't avoid that. But calc average is only called if we actually select option number three from the menu. So in order to get functional coverage, we will have to run it and at least pick option number three. It would be nice to have, so turns out function coverage is very, very minimal. And that's probably the absolute bare minimum that you should do. Statement coverage would mean that every statement in here is executed. And well, uh, we want to make sure that every line of code that is present in this winds up happening in one of our tests. Clearly that's a, a somewhat higher bar than just making sure that every function gets executed. But it's still fairly minimal because there are other coverages like decision and condition coverage where we want to make sure that every different decision that we could make is executed. For every condition, we want to make sure that we have both true and false options on it. So for example, to test this code with a complete condition coverage, we not only have to make sure that we use inputs one, two, three, four, and something else beyond those, we also have to make sure that we call calc, calc average both with no tests, but some assignments, or no tests, uh, and then some tests, and no assignments, and some assignments. If we haven't tried those options, then we haven't figured out you know, we haven't tested all the possibilities. We either won't have executed this branch of code or we won't have executed this branch of code to make sure that those produce things that work down here. Turns out that as soon as you throw in a loop, uh, technically the uh, coverage in a sense for, for all paths becomes impossible, but for loop coverage we want to make sure that every loop is executed a you know, small number of times in the case of a do while, the smallest number would be one, and that our program works. In the case of a while loop, the smallest number would be zero, and we want to make sure our program works there. Or that it works for multiple executions, one execution, two execution, and then many executions. So we would want to have separate tests that do each one of those different possibilities for input. And the broadest type of coverage that we'd like to have is what's called path coverage. Turns out that path coverage is pretty much impossible in any real program. And that's because we would want, in, if we have path coverage, we have at least one test that tries every single possible option through the code. 
Now to give you some idea of what this means, in the case of our ifs here, where I have one if followed by another if, well, just because of these two ifs, there are four different paths. One is no tests with assignments. One is tests with no assignments, no tests, no assignments, tests and assignments. So we have four different possibilities for those two ifs. And if I add more ifs on, the number of possibilities grows exponentially. It would go from two, if I only have one if, to four, with two of them, to eight, to 16, to 32. The number of test cases you have to include goes up dramatically. But that's not the worst of it, because technically for something like a while loop, to have complete path coverage, there are an infinite number of possibilities. And that makes it impossible to, to test all paths. Even though that's impossible, that doesn't mean that you should give up and just say, I'm not going to bother testing. You need to make sure that you have fairly good coverage. Having up through loop coverage, where you have tested all of your different conditions and you have gone through each loop the minimum number of times as well as several times beyond that would be ideal to make sure that you feel comfortable that your code is actually working the way that it's supposed to.